Hi everyone, in the previous video I showed you how you can integrate Jenkins with Bitbucket so that a new build is automatically started after each commit. But we didn't actually do anything. We didn't build real code, we didn't test it, we didn't deploy it. So in this video I'll be taking it a bit further and configure Jenkins so that it runs PHP unit tests after each commit. To follow this video, you'll need to know the basics of unit testing. You also need to know the basics of PHP and PHP unit. If you don't know any of these subjects, you might find it a bit harder to follow this video, but give it a try. So what's next for this video? Well first of all I'm going to run through the code that I want to test. Afterwards, I'm going to install PHP unit onto my Jenkins server and I'm going to install the JUnit plugin for Jenkins. Then I'm going to configure our existing job so that it runs unit tests and then I'm going to test and verify that everything works correctly. But hold on a minute, you might ask, why do you install the JUnit plugin to run PHP unit? Well, good question. To answer it, let's take a look at the complete flow. It begins when Jenkins starts the build process. We'll configure it so that it runs PHP unit tests on the server. PHP unit will run all these tests and we will ask it to generate a report of all these tests in the JUnit XML format and it will actually store that onto the file system. Now finally, Jenkins will parse the contents of the XML file. It can determine if all tests were successful and act accordingly. So now that you have this overview, let's begin. So for the purpose of this video, I also created an example project and uh, my example project, project is stored in the folder Jenkins-phpunit-test and it basically contains just one PHP class, it's called gumballmachine.php, which mimics the behavior of a gumball machine. It has one attribute, it has the number of gumballs in the machine as an attribute, and then it has three methods. The first method is a getter, which returns the amount of gumballs that are still in the machine. The second one is a setter, which allows us to set the amount of gumballs in the machine. And then the third met method, is turn wheel, which simulates um, a user turning the wheel and the machine dispensing a gumball. So this reduces the number of gumballs in the machine by one. Now we also wrote a unit test for this gumball machine class, and I put that in the tests directory. So here is gumball machine test.php, and this is a PHP unit framework test case, which creates a new instance of the gumball machine every for every test, and then I just have one test to see if the, the wheel turn actually works. So what we do is we create a new instance of the, mach the gumball machine. We set the amount of gumballs to 100. We then turn the wheel and then we verify that the amount of gumballs in the machine is 99. So just to show you that everything is working correctly, let me open up my terminal and run PHP unit. So I'm gonna run PHP unit test slash Gumball machine test. I'm going to hit enter and here it says okay one test one assertion everything went well. And just to show you I'm going to screw up the gumball machine uh, and show you what happens when this test actually fails. So instead of reducing the amount of gumballs in the machine by one every time we turn the wheel I'm just going to do nothing. I'm not going to reduce the amount of gumballs in the machine which is well, which is not correct. So I go back to my terminal, I run the test again, and now, boom, there was one failure. Fail, failed to assert that 100 matches the expected 99. So I'm going to fix the gumbo machine, and then I'm going to show you the Bitbucket repository for this project. So here on Bitbucket, I have the exact same project. I have my gumbo machine with the same logic, and I also have the same unit test. Now I've also created a job in Jenkins, which is also called Jenkins-PHPUnit-Test, uh, to actually build this project and unit test it as we uh, make new commits. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to install PHP unit test onto our Jenkins server. So for that, I'm going to open up an SSH connection to my server. Okay, so here I am logged in into my Jenkins server and installing PHP unit test is actually incredibly easy. You just have to run sudo apt get install PHP unit and this will install not only PHP unit, it will also install all the dependencies such as PHP itself uh, and many other frameworks. So I'm going to say yes 
And I'm going to speed up the video so that this doesn't bore you. Okay, so that's all we have to do on our server. Uh, PHP unit is now correctly installed and we can continue with the Jenkins part. So I'm going to go to Jenkins and the first thing you need to do is you need to verify that the JUnit plugin is installed and enabled in your Jenkins installation. Now, normally this is the case, but check it anyway. So in available pl in uh, manage plugins, go to the installed section and here you should see that the JUnit plugin is indeed active um, and installed. So now I'm going to go back to the homepage of Jenkins and I'm going to change the settings of this job. So I'm going to configure it. And in the, in the build section, I'm going to add a new build step. So here I'm going to go for execute shell. And what I want to do here is I want to instruct Jenkins to run the PHP unit tests and then do something with the results. So if the test failed, then Jenkins should obviously fail the build. And if the, if the test succeed, then it should continue with the other tasks. So here I have the possibility to execute any shell command um, that's available on my Linux server. So I'm going to run PHP unit and I'm going to instruct it to log the results as in, or, or in the JUnit uh, file format. And I'm going to say that you can log it in results dash php unit dash php unit dot xml you can choose this path and you can choose the, the name of the test results as well now you might not, not have noticed but in my project i also have a php unit dot xml configuration file and i'm going to reference that here i'm going to say the configuration file that you have to use for this unit test is located in the test directory and it's called php unit dot xml now just to show you, I can show you this, this configuration right here. It's in the tests directory, it's called phpunit.xml. And here basically I say that the entire test suite is located in this very directory. And it will run all the tests it finds in this directory. Pretty simple. So back to Jenkins. That's pretty much all we have to do for this execute shell step uh, here. So this will, this will be running on every build. And PHP unit will publish the results as a JUnit XML file. Okay, so now that that's done, Jenkins will run the PHP unit test, but it won't do anything with it. So to do something with these test results, I'm going to add a post build action, and I'm going to choose publish JUnit test results report. And this basically asks me, hey, which results or which reports do you want to publish? And now I gave it this path, so I said to PHP unit, publish your results in this file. So all I have to do is I have to copy and paste it in here. And then I can configure the health report ampli amplification uh, factor. Now I want all my tests for this project to succeed. Now you could say the, the build is still successful if just 90% or 95% of, of, of tests succeeded. But in this case, I really want all my tests to succeed. Well, hey, I've only got one test, so it would be pretty bad if even that test would fail. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to save my project and I'm going to test our configuration. So the, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to create a new commit and test if everything works correctly. I'm just going to manually trigger the build. So I'm going to click on build now. This schedules a build and, uh, and should run our PHP unit test. And as you can see, our build succeeded. I can click on it uh, and I can see test results right here and it says no failures. And if I click on it, I can see well, in the root package, there is a gumball machine test. It took three milliseconds to complete. There was one past test. I can even click on it. I can see the name of the test. I can see how long it took. Okay, so let's now see what happens if these tests fail. So let's go back to our gumball machine and let's rig it. Let's make it faulty. I'm going to edit this file. And instead of giving the user one gumball for every turn, I'm going to say we're going to give him two. I'm going to make a commit. I'm going to leave the commit message like this. I'm going to say commit. And I'm going to go back to Jenkins and I'm going to trigger another build here. So I'm going to say back to project, build now, and wait for the build to finish. And boom, there you have it. Build number two has failed. If I click on it, I can see one failure. That's one more than the previous uh, build. And if I click on test results, again, I can see which test has failed uh, and what the differences are between uh, this build and the previous build. So that's it for this video. 
Curious to learn more about Jenkins? Well, in the next video, I'll show you how you can integrate Jenkins with the Bitbucket Build Status API. That way, you can view the status of your builds on the Bitbucket website. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you liked it, you can support me by following me on Twitter or subscribing to my channel.